Debian Buster has moved from using IP tables to NF tables for the firewall. So NF tables is a net filter project that provides packet filtering, network address translation, and other packet mangling. And from what I've been reading about it, NF tables is very good for performance and throughput on both desirable connections and blocking undesirable connections. So it does sound an excellent and positive change. With one small exception, documentation is pretty poor. So I spent a couple of days trying to get my head around it. I was following the commands listed here and honestly, it didn't really work very well. I actually moved to the point of editing the config files directly and that worked fine. I managed to get some rules together and achieved what I wanted to. So in this video, I'm gonna cover some of the basics of NF tables for a server or desktop. I'm talking about a simple server here, so I'm not doing anything with load balancing or forwarding. Nope, we're just gonna do accepting or rejecting connections to certain ports on TCP, UDP, and ICMP protocols. So this is my Debian server, which happens to be a virtual machine, which is right here. So on there, I have a web server, which is currently showing a PHP info page. Yeah, it's just something simple. I'll just talk about a couple of the commands first. So the install of NF tables, if it's not already on your system, will be apt install NF tables and system CTL enable NF tables dot service. That assumes you're using a Debian based system with system D. The command you'll be using is called NFT. Now what I did find on Raspbian is that NF tables is not installed by default and even worse, they've not even set a path to the SBIN folder. For this tutorial, I'll be doing the direct editing of the nftables.conf. So with your favorite text editor, for me, it's sudo nano slash etc slash nftables.conf. This is the basic file and it has to start with bang slash usr slash sbin slash nft dash f, then flush rule set. And it has a table and a few different chains on it. And I suppose looking at it simplistically here, we're going to control the behavior of input, forward, and output. Something which probably should have been there by default is this line here, type filter hook input priority zero. And what I will point out is really fussy on the tabs. Everything has to be in a tabbed position. So I do believe this is how the default config file looks. I'll be working mainly on the input chain, but to start with, I'll be allowing connections from the loopback. And that command is IAF name, LO accept, loopback accept. Then we want to be allowing established or related connections. So this would be an outbound request and then with data coming back into your system. So CT state established and related will be accepting that traffic. That is connection tracking state. But NF tables can also track invalid connections. And to get rid of those, we'll be doing CT state and then valid drop. I could start with seeing how this goes. So yeah, I'll just control X and save. Yep, save that, overwrite the file. And to make those changes take effect, I'll do sudo systemctl restart nftables.service. No errors, that's all good. You can check how things look with the command su nft list rule set. And that provides that little rule set of the file there. Yep, looking similar, minus the comments. I'll carry on with the editing. Perhaps a useful feature to demonstrate is no ping floods, blocking ICMP echo request packets, limiting them to a rate of two a second. I'm not exactly sure how it measures this two a second, but uh, before I start implementing this firewall any further, I need to maintain my SSH connection to the server. So I can open up the SSH port with the command TCP D port destination port SSH, and it understands that SSH will be on port 22 I'm looking for an IPv4 source address of well, my network, 192.168.620/24. And with that traffic, I'll be accepting it. A firewall works by reading the rules from top down. So for all these I've said accept, with the exception of one here that I've dropped, but now I get to the other traffic where I just want to drop it. So I'm not going to accept anything else other than what I've accepted here. Control X, Y, I'll save that. Restart the service, and I still have my SSH connection, so that's good. But what I will find is the web server running on the device 
will now be inaccessible. So I've refreshed and it's not going anywhere because I've not allowed it at this point. If I have a few things I want to reference my local area network IP address on, I could actually set a variable. And I can do that by going back up to the top here, um, just below the flush rule set. I'll type in define LAN. I'm actually going to be a bit more specific on it. 192.168.62.5 to well, last octet 20. And I'm going to use that over here. So reference it like you would any other variable in bash. So dollar LAN. So control X, Y, yep, that's okay. Restart the NF table service. And then with a different system on my network, if I go and SSH across to that server, what I'll find it does nothing because it's outside of that range. You can specify multiple services by enclosing them in braces. So do SSH comma HTTP comma HTTPS. Or in fact, we could specify it numerically. 443, just mix it up a bit, close that and save it, restart the NF table service. Now what we'll find, if I refresh that web server, now I can get to it. If you're using something like Cloudflare for a WAF on your web server, you can actually accept access to the Cloudflare IP addresses in this form. And if you've got an IPv6 address, I've just got to get one of the IPv6 addresses, so say like that one there. For the IPv6, it'll be IP6 instead of IP. So IP version 4 is assumed as just IP. I control X, Y, I'll save that and restart. If you wanted to open up the ports to everyone on the internet, you would do it in this form, so TCP, destination port, in this case HTTP and HTTPS, the web server and just accept. On the other hand, if you just wanted to enable certain IP addresses, then you would list all those and then reject anything else. So TCP D port, HTTP ports, then reject with TCP reset. Or you could just drop it, but I'll show you the difference with reject. And that is by refreshing, I'm just unable to connect. Last things to finish up with, you can specify port ranges. So to reject all server ports, that should be in 1023, not 1024, yeah, close enough. For UDP ports, you can't respond with a TCP reset. So instead you respond with ICMP. So an ICMP packet of type port unreachable. So I don't think it has DNS as a name. So it would be UDP port 53, reject with ICMP type port unreachable. Forwarding is mentioned here, but I won't be doing any of that on this server, so I'll just simply drop it. Policy of drop. And for the outbound traffic, well, let's say I want to stop any SSH connections happening out of this server. So preventing this server from communicating via SSH to any other systems. That's the outbound request, not the inbound request. But otherwise we'll be accepting any output data, so policy accept. Well, that was a look at getting started with NF tables. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.